what's wrong with this plant. Customer brought in this plant because she's concerned about some browning around the leaves and the overall kind of wimpier, skinnier leaves that she's seeing. So the first thing we gotta do is get it out of the pot and see what's going on with the roots. I'm gonna loosen up the root ball here. This will help us assess what's going on. Um, not seeing anything too terrible yet. Maybe a little bit of dry rot. I see some leftover rhizome. Nothing terrible. I don't smell anything, so that's always a good sign. Root rot is something that will be very present. Root rot is pretty common with these plants. Okay, we've got a little bit of rot going on right here. This looks to be old. Don't think that's much to be concerned about. Yeah, I mean, there is a little bit of root rot. You can see for the size of the plant, there's not a whole lot of roots going on. And there's definitely some roots going on in the soil right here. These roots just kind of naturally fell off as I got them out of the pot. Um, if there was no root rot, they should be able to withstand just taking them out of the pot. So that's why I would assume that they've probably fallen off in the past due to watering a little bit too frequently. Could also be dry rot, which is where you just don't water the plant for so long that the roots, not having any water, uh, die off just from being too dry, which actually happens really frequently with snake plants because people neglect them a little bit too much. They let them dry out. Instead of just 100%, they go down to like 1,000%. <laughs> oh, I'm also uncovering a very wrinkly leaf right here. Well, let me show you what that looks like. See so yeah, how it's very wrinkly. So this would further indicate some sort of either dry rot or root rot because if you've watered too frequently that means you've killed off a lot of the roots and there just aren't physically enough roots to hydrate the leaves that are above it then on the other end if you've dry rotted them then again still not enough roots to hydrate the leaves above it so if you've underwater there's not enough moisture in the pot for the roots to adequately hydrate the leaves and make them plump as they should be so they get wrinkly then if you've watered too frequently then you've suffocated the roots lots of roots have died off and then there just aren't enough roots to take up any available moisture that's in the pot to hydrate the leaves properly. So either way you get wrinkly leaves. It's kind of a tricky one, but hopefully that explanation clears it up. All right, I'm going to set this aside and get it cleaned up over here. Get it in a nice new pot. So I'm actually going to be going down in pot size due to the size of the root ball. We lost quite a bit of roots right here. So if I were to go into a larger pot than what it came out of, that's going to make a harder time on the root system. And we really want to focus on the root development. The health of the roots is the health of your plant. You guys hear me say that over and over again. So by putting it in a smaller pot, it's going to ensure more airflow. It's going to ensure that the plant dries out faster, which is really, really good, especially for succulents like the, like the snake plant. So because we lost roots either to root rot or dry rot, we're going to be going down in pot size. Your pot size should always reflect the diameter of your root ball. You only want to go one to two inches larger than the overall diameter of your root ball. So you can measure it really quickly. Let me grab my measuring tape for demonstration. You can put them together like so. And this root ball is measuring about three and a half, four inches wide. And then we've got it going into a four and three quarters inch pot. So right there, it's gonna be pretty tight, but succulents especially like that tightness. These nice clear plastic pots are from repotme.com, by the way. They sent me these to use, I absolutely love them. They have tons of airflow on the side with these nice uh, slots on the side, on the bottom here as well. They're great for orchids, they're great for anything that likes to dry out pretty quickly, like succulents, like snake plants, ZZ plants, uh, orchids, you know, obviously. So even though these are usually used for orchids, I'm also going to use it for snake plants because they like to also dry out a lot in between watering. I'm also going to be using the Gritty Imperial Potting Mix from Repot Me. This one is again, great for plants that want to dry out quickly, like succulents, like snake plants, like cacti. Now, if it's dry rot, I don't worry as much about root sanitizing, but because I'm not sure which it is, I'm going to use 3% hydrogen peroxide, spray it down on these roots. This is going to neutralize that bad bacteria, that root rot bacteria, so it doesn't spread after we get it into its new pot. Again, this is 3% hydrogen peroxide. I don't wash it off after, I just pot it directly in there. 
Let's put the plant in and see what we're dealing with. Yeah, so I'm going to put just a little layer on bottom first. Open it up a fresh bag. It's always nice to get into a fresh bag of soil. Just going to put a nice little layer on the bottom there. Just enough to cover the bottom. You don't need much more than that in this case. Now I'm going to plop my snake plant in there. Position it how I like. And now all we have to do is backfill. What do we do every time we repot? Slap that pot. This is gonna work all of that grit and soil around those roots. We don't want any gaps. Gaps in your soil is another way to get dry rot because then there's no soil coming in contact with the root and then those roots don't get water and then they die. So it's a really good idea to get it nice and settled in there. Spread it around with your fingers, press them in there, make sure, stand back and admire your work, make sure it's upright how you like it. I'm going to remove this leaf right here just because it's mostly dead and a little unsightly. There we go. Now what I believe is happening here, because of the thinner roots, because of the root rot that we saw, I'm thinking a couple of things are happening, and I also happen to know this customer's lighting situation because I have seen pictures uh, of her space. Um, I believe that this plant is in very low light. Now, snake plants are great at tolerating low light, but that doesn't mean no light. Oftentimes, we go beyond low light and only put them in ambient light. And very often, that's going to show in the leaves in terms of uh, very thin leaves, very weak leaves they should be more upright like this. So when they start to get longer and thinner and weaker like this and start to droop over, it's usually a pretty good indication that the plant is in too low of light. It could be other things too, but in my experience, that's one of the most common things that I see amongst snake plants that come into my store to be repotted. Once the customer gets home, I'm going to advise her to give this a very thorough soak just around the soil. We don't ever need to water the leaves of the Sansevieria, of these snake plants. We just want to water the soil very, very thoroughly, water it over and over again until the, the water is coming out of all the drainage holes. Do that three or four times. You really want a thorough saturation every time you water these plants. But that's gonna do it for the repotting of the snake plant. If you have any questions about this plant, please leave them in the comments below.